Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Well, a little while ago, we made a video of how to add some add to cart buttons to your shop page and how to style them. We had a comment on this video. Somebody said that they're not responsive. In other words, when you look at them on tablet and mobile, they don't shrink down. So let's check that. I'm using Google Chrome with the great inspector tools here. I hit F12. I've got it in responsive mode here. Let's drag this down so you can see what's going on. There's our buttons. That's kind of on a tablet. As we get bigger, they're absolutely fine. As you can see, more columns. Let's shrink down the sort of mobile phone size. And right about there, 777. That's about as small as you can go, 777. And then they start to sort of touch each other. And let's look perhaps on the iPhone 12, which is probably going to be similar size to this. Yeah, they're overlapping there. So let's fix that. I'm going to write a bit of CSS today to make these responsive. And as usual, don't let the CSS put you off. Any code that I write, I'll put down below the video. And you're welcome to use it how you wish. I want to take my responsive toggle off. We'll go back to desktop view. Roll this up so we can see what's going on. I'm going to inspect one of these add to cart buttons we added last time. And here it is. Here's the CSS that we wrote to style it to give it our colors for our site here. And looking down at that CSS, it's got a width of 180, which we'll need to shrink down. We've got no actual font size there, which we want to shrink down as well. So let's try taking the size down width. Let's make that maybe 120. And there's too much text or the text is too big there. So let's take the font size down. I'm going to click and add a new entry. Let's say font size. Let's try 12 pixels. Yeah, that works fine. But when we hover over, we've got a little chevron there. Actually, I'm on the wrong button there. We've got a little chevron there as well, which is not in the correct position. So we need to adjust the hot line height of that. And we'll do that in a minute. But let's just write this code. Because if I refresh this page now, you'll notice everything goes back to how it was. So we know what we've got to do. Let's go over to our customizer. For anybody that doesn't know how to do that, go to your dashboard, down to appearance, and then customize. That's going to take us to this page here, or you could go down to Divi, general tab at the bottom, they've got an additional CSS or custom CSS box. It all ends up in the same place. If we go to our additional CSS on the bottom there, here's the code that we wrote for our buttons to style them up. And there should be some on this page as well. Yeah, there we go right there. So let's add what they call a media query so that we can affect it. I've got a title there from where I did it earlier. Always a good idea to give your CSS a title. No forget, I'll put this CSS down below. So we've got to give it a media query and a media query is at media, then own, screen, and, and then we open some round brackets and inside we can tell it the size of screen that we want to affect. So we say anything with a maximum width, max width. And we said 777, let's call it perhaps 790. So it's colon, 790 pixel. Wait, now we decided on the size, we can open and close some more curly brackets. And inside those curly brackets, we can write what we want to happen when the screen reaches 790 picks. Now we want to get this class name because this is what we're actually affecting. The WooCommerce products list item button right there. We'll add some more curly brackets. Inside, we can tell it what we want. Well, we set a width of 120, I believe, on mobile. So let's say width or DTH colon 120 pixels. 
think that's what we decided. Semicolon. Always put a semicolon after your lines of code. If you don't, it won't read the next one that you write within the curly brackets there. And we changed the font size to 12 pixels as well. So let's drop down font size. 12 pixels. Again, semicolon in case we want to add another line of code. And that should fix the size of it. Let's publish this now. Once published, we'll go back to our page and refresh. Let's get my responsive tab up again. I'm going to hit F12. I'm using Google Chrome here, by the way. We've got our on responsive. Let's see what happens now. I'm going to drag this down out of the way a little bit. Let's try it now. When it gets to 790 up here, it should reduce to those media query size that we gave it. And there it is. Fantastic. But if I hover over one of these, the little chevron that's on there is a little too low. We need to adjust that with its line height. Now to get to that, if I bring this up again, let's inspect our little add to cart button so we're on the right thing down here. Here we go. If you hit the little chevron over the left, there's a pseudo element after, and that's where that little arrow is. As you can see, as I'm highlighting it, it's highlighting it up there. So if I click on that, here it is. Uh, let's have a look. Nothing that we really can affect there. If we go down a little bit further, here we've got some line height. So we can adjust that line height to reduce the space at the top there. At the moment, it's 1M. Let's take it down to about half of that. Let's say 0.5M. As you can see, the arrows popped up. That's a little too much. It's a little too high up there now. Let's try 0.7. No. 0.6 has got to be on the money. There we go, 0.6. And that sorted that out. If you wanted to, you could actually take the font size down a bit as well. You'd have to readjust the N. At the moment, it's 32 pixels. Take it down to about 20 pixels. And you could actually select the number and roll down with your mouse if you want to reduce it that way. As you can see, as it's going down, it's going up there. So we can adjust the M again. So we need to take it back up. Try 0.9. I'll double click on that 6. Let's try 0.9. Actually, let's put it back how it was. 1M, just a little too far down. If we take it down just a little bit in size, just revolve it. 21, 20, that looks perfect to me. So we'll remember font size 20. Let's go back to our custom code now. Down to our media queries right here. And it's an after pseudo element. So I'm going to take that whole class name again, copy it. After the first curly, not the second, because that's the end of our media query, we need to put it within this and this curly bracket. So I'm going to drop down from the curly bracket above. I'm going to paste that name in there. Right after it, I'm going to put a colon and the word after. That means we can target that pseudo element. Let's open some more curly brackets. And don't forget, this code will be down below. Anybody who just wants to copy and paste it. And we wanted to change that font size to 20, wasn't it? Font size, 20 pixels. Let's go up and publish our code then. Back over to the shop. Let's refresh this page. Roll on down and let's get my responsive toggle back up again. Bring this down. Make sure it's going to work. There's the regulars. There's our new one. In fact, let's just do it on an iPhone. There's our new buttons. And if I hold my mouse on it, it's still a little bit low there. So let's just inspect that. Perhaps I put in the wrong value there. 
Let's inspect that and see what I put in. Called debugging when you do this. And again, I want to go to the after. There it is, font size 20. Thought that was actually working for us. Obviously, I'm wrong. Yeah, let's change that to 19. That seems to be a bit better. I'll leave that there. We'll just change that 20 to a 19. Publish it again. Go back. Let's refresh this page one more time. Now let's take another look. If I roll over it. That's better. That chevron's more where I want it. Fantastic. So there you go, guys. There is how to make your WooCommerce buttons responsive. I drag this down out of the way. This is the way we left it last time. And as the screen shrinks up, the columns disappear. When we get down to 970, our buttons are going to reduce in size like that. That works out an awful lot better. Fantastic. Well, I hope that answers your question of how to make those buttons responsive. Like I say, all this code, add the button on mobile. I'll put down below the menu for anybody who wants to copy and paste it. In our next video, I'll show you how, how to add a view more or view item button above your add to cart button. I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignDetectives.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.